and we're going back to my mate now, my mate who who's, uh, was out for the grizzly bear. Now, I directed this, and one thing I was after was a bit of cinematography. So I've got these beautiful shots, I'm sure you'll agree, uh, all around the campfire. And I tried to create a mood. Remember the great warrior poets that would play chess be the night before they went into battle? <coughs> That's what we've got here, look. There he is. Game of chess going on, just getting their yin and their yang sorted out. Beautiful juxtaposition there of the knife and the chess. Absolutely marvellous. It's, I'll tell you what it is, it's Brechtian. <laughs> Except, of course, they're not actually chess pieces, are they? They're just bits of melted candle wax that they <laughs> were pushing around on a board. But I remember saying to him at this point, do something tough. Do some, a real tough guy thing. Go on. Go on, Troy, do something. That's it. What are you going to do? L light your cigarette off a flaming log. Go on, Troy. <laughs> no, just stop it now. You make the f No, you burnt your... You've burnt all the tassels on your hat now, haven't you? <laughs> but uh, one thing I did ask them to do was, could you tell me some stories that, you know, that illustrate just what hard men you are, how you've looked at danger and gone, ha-ha, in the face of it? It's one of the reasons why I went, went to Vietnam, I suppose. Sorry, this man's told a story about being in Vietnam, just incidentally, apropos of nothing, this is several years ago. He's now one of the leading toy manufacturers in the United States of America, multimillionaire. Sorry. It was for the fun travel and adventure and, and to get a a feel for what it was like in combat. We were out on a, on a mission that had a, a real quiet area of operation, nothing happened, and, and we were getting fidgety and, and needed the fix, and so we played the game that we called Outrun the Hand Grenade. <laughs> you pull the hand grenade out of your belt, you pull the pin, you pop the spoon, and you had to set it at your feet. You couldn't throw it at your feet, you had to pop the spoon, set it at your feet, and then your choice was to either run just as hard and fast down, down the trail as the, until it went off, uh, or... Or what? <laughs> A choice is when one thing keeps you alive and the other thing might keep you alive. Run down the trail or get blown up. <laughs> okay, oh, they're off. They're off in search of the, of the great grizzly bear and they've got the big suit. And I can't help thinking, all the time I was making it, there is a basic design fault. You've got a big suit, you're all in co Bears live in kind of mountains, don't they? Hilly terrain. But obviously, they're the experts, not me. By the time he gets around to about the corner of that uh, ridge line, uh, we expect the bear to, uh, to be uh, taking offense to him being in, in its territory, and we'll be hitting him somewhere there. Now, why is the bear... This is the other thing I didn't say. Why is the bear going to take offense at him being in his territory? Seems not... Until I realised that what they do is they go dressed as uh, Frank Spencer <laughs> meets Mr. Pastry. <laughs> no, you would take offense. Eh? Anyway, come on. You know, this might sound a little crazy. I mean, all this research and all this time and hope and stuff like that, but my honest opinion, if a grizzly's feeding on that uh, uh, food up there that he's killed or whatever, wherever he is, I'm going to round that bend, and uh, he's going to take one look. He's going to be gone so fast. Make your head spin. Right. You're going to get the stuff on, the big heavy armor, okay, to protect you from the bear. You're going to walk up the hill, across the little lake, through the trees, around the corner to the bear, and he's going to be frightened and run away. Well... I think we all want to see you do that, Troy. <laughs> so we're with you 100%. Off you go, off into the mountains, and take on the grizzly bear. Oops. <laughs> Why, what if we carry you up to the grizzly bear there? So would, would that help at all? And now one of the great phrases. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm like a fish out of water in this thing up here. I'm like a fish out of water in this thing up here. Troy, anywhere that hasn't got bars on the windows, <laughs> you're like a fish out of water, my friend. Anyway, I've got to go. I'll see you later. Yeah.